Hello, I'm Rob with Crutchfield's Pro and Commercial Audio team, and today we're going to be taking a look at wiring in RCA cables into the back of your commercial audio equipment that has a Phoenix connector block. For today's demonstration, we're going to be using the Atlas AA50 commercial mixer amplifier, a tiny flathead screwdriver, a pair of wire strippers, a set of stereo RCA cables, and I'll be introducing you to the Atlas Ysum cable for summing uh, stereo RCA source devices into a mono Phoenix block. So to start, what we'll need to do is take a look at the back of our amplifier mixer. And in the back of this thing, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of connections, some of which you'll recognize, like the RCA connections in the center, and then a bunch of Phoenix blocks that you may or may not have uh, dealt with before. But that's what we're talking about today. So the first thing we can do is, if you've got a stereo RCA source going into your commercial audio stuff, I would say start with using your RCA connections first, even if that means not starting with input one, but starting with input two or three, um, and then just making note on the front of the amplifier what import source or what input channel you're using for your source. Um, if all of those are filled up and you still have to get stuff in and all you have left is your Phoenix connector blocks, which is what these guys are, what we're gonna need to know is how to adapt these cables to this. So uh, what we're gonna do first is double check our pinout on the back of our amplifier. Left to right is ground and then minus and then plus. And that fits with this connector this direction. So we're gonna match that pinout with our cabling. Uh, on your RCA cables, what we're gonna be talking about first is wiring in a mono, as in one RCA line into that Phoenix connector first. So what we're gonna do is actually pull this back so we can we, we don't get confused. We're just gonna use the one cable. And what we need to do is get to the actual bare wire inside here. And how we're gonna do that is just clip the termination right off the end. Put that aside. And then, because we're gonna end up making a jumper, because there's only two elements in here, and you'll see that in just a second, what I would need you to do is go back like two or three inches to grab this shielding off of here so that we've got way more than we're gonna need so that we have extra cable to work with. So in this case, there we go. Put that aside. So we're gonna use all this stuff. You're gonna notice immediately that you've got two elements in here. You've got a shielded element and a braided, unshielded element. And that is, the braided element is our ground wire we're gonna pull all of that stuff aside. And the shielded element is our positive line. So right there we got two connections, but we've got three connections on the back of our equipment, ground, positive, and negative. And what we're gonna to need to do is create a jumper wire from our ground to our negative. So we got positive, ground, and then we're gonna create a jumper to go from ground to that third connection and what we're gonna do is create a jumper using ex excess shielded cable from the inside of the cable. So what we're gonna do is take this, chop it back uh, about two inches or so, and we're gonna turn this into a jumper here in just a second, so I'm gonna put that aside. With the rest of our stuff, we're gonna strip back some more shielding on this uh, positive line kind of bind that up so that it's easy to work with. And then I'm gonna cut our ground to match so that it's all sort of the same length when we go into our connection. And then I'm gonna bind that ground up so that that's a little bit easier to work with as well. There we go. So now We've got our positive and our ground connections that are gonna go into our three pin connector. But what we're gonna do is create a jumper to go from our ground to our negative line. And to do that, we're gonna use that little chunk of shielded wire 
that we pulled out of the center of that cable. We're going to take another little bit here. We're going to strip a little bit off of each end or wherever that went. Bind that up so it's easy to work with. And then the same thing on the opposite end. There we go. Same thing, right? So now we've got a cable that is nice and easy to bend, and that'll be our jumper wire. So once again, we're gonna review our pinout on the back of our amp before we actually wire this bad boy in here. We're gonna look at it like this to make sure that we got the right pins, ground minus plus, which means on here it's gonna be ground minus and plus. Ground and minus are gonna get the jumper. So now we just wire it up. I'm gonna start out in here, plus. <laughs> wire up our jumper from minus. Bring our ground line in. our jumper from minus to ground. Like so. So now we've got our connection here, ground and our jumper from ground to minus and then our plus at the other end, which matches our pinout over here, ground, minus, and plus. And once we plug that back in, you're all set for your mono input. Now, which of those cables we used? In this case, we've got a color code, and we know that this is our black end, and that's our red end, so on the other end, we'll know that black is currently connected. However, if you've chopped both ends off and you've forgotten which end, you can always check your cable. One of these guys will have printing on it. The actual run of the cable itself will have printing on only one of the two wires leading in. Uh, so if you follow that printing, you'll be able to follow which connection you just made at the other end. Little tip for keeping yourself straight. Now, in the event that you need to wire in a stereo source into your Phoenix connector, we can't just wire it directly in, uh, at least not for high fidelity audio. What we're gonna need to do is get you a YSUM cable that will that is designed for uh, stereo RCA and summing it down to a mono block. This probably looks pretty familiar now that we've taken a look at this little Phoenix connector block. You'll recognize the pins and the outs and the whole thing. Well, this block is not the same size and what we're gonna need to do is adapt this into this by removing this end and wiring it properly into the other Phoenix block. In order to do that, we need to know what these connections are. Our YSUM cables, the Atlas YSUM cables that we use, have the pinout listed on a little sticky thing that comes along with the cable. But the most important thing is to actually look at the cables themselves. You'll recognize now that we've built a jumper on this mono cable, where the jumper is on this cable. There's gonna be one cable that you can see in the shrink wrap here. It's this green line. And I'll get you close on that insert so you can see it. Uh, this green line is our jumper. So that has to be uh, going between ground and minus. Because those two are jumpered, it doesn't matter which one is ground and which one is minus. They're basically the same line. But that means that the one that isn't jumpered is our positive line. And that's really the most important of the uh, connections to make sure that we get it right in order to make that connection solid. So what we're gonna do is match up our pinout here to the pinout, again, ground, negative, positive. In this case, we've got ground, negative, and positive. Positive is on this side with the non-jumper. And then we're gonna take this cable apart. We're gonna take this cable apart keeping this green line as our jumper. And we're just gonna match that up to 
the pin out that's going to be on the back of our commercial equipment to make sure that we've got that connection nice and solid. So once again, the jumper is our ground going to our negative. Positive is the one without the jumper. We're going to wire this guy up this direction. There we go. And adapt it for our smaller Phoenix connector so that now we have once again, that positive matching our pinout and our jumper. I can't stress that enough. Make sure you've got the right pinout. And then now we've got a stereo RCA source plugged appropriately summed to mono into our input channel on our commercial audio amp. And of course, if you have any questions about any of this, you can always give us a call at the commercial audio department here at Crutchfield. Thanks for watching.